Having learned about atoms and um, the different subatomic particles in the previous chapter, we will now look at the next level of organization in nature, which are represented by what we call as the molecules of life. Um, pretty soon you will see that these molecules of life are, have a very unique uh, pattern of arrangement and you will see covalent bonding and hydrogen bonding um, considerably present in these molecules. Uh, the molecules of life as uh, they are called um, are usually those that have carbon definitely in it. Besides carbon, uh, the second most abundant element that would be present in these would be hydrogen. So you will see uh, the arrangement of carbon and hydrogen um, to form some unique patterns which are called as functional groups. Functional groups is a group of, ad um, of atoms that are covalently bonded to carbon and each functional group is unique in, in each of these uh, molecules of life. These molecules of life are also called as macromolecules. Uh, macro which means big or large and molecules because they're made up of a group of atoms. So living thing will, things will usually consist of uh, one or more of these. Um, the first macromolecule is carbohydrates, then you have lipids, um, then we have proteins and then we have nucleic acids. In this um, section we will explore each of these uh, macromolecules and find the unique structure that is uh, pertaining to that particular group of uh, molecules. So uh, let's look at the, um, the term functional group one more time. Um, this is present over here as to what is this functional group. Now keep in mind that all of these uh, molecules have a carbon backbone which means that carbon uh, must be present and the second most abundant element would be atom and they are covalently bonded to each other. Uh, if you recall we did earlier we said carbon had um, carbon is an element that, that you will find present in group 4. What it means is that if you uh, if an element is present in a particular group it can form that particular number of bonds. So carbon in group 4 means that it can have 4 bonds. It can either have 4 bonds in this pattern which is you can see there are if I was to write the ratio of these two elements I would say for every one carbon there are 4 hydrogen atoms. However that is not always the case. Um, as long as there are 4 bonds uh, directly with carbon it can be either to another element such as oxygen for example it can bond like this two bonds can go with uh, with uh, oxygen and you can have two hydrogens on the side so there are various unique patterns each of these patterns are called as a functional group so there is a hydroxy functional group there is a methyl functional group a carbonyl a carboxyl amine phosphate uh, these are just to name a few of these functional groups uh, when we look at a functional group in a 3D pattern, uh, we see that each black atom over here is the carbon atom and it can be linked to either um, the white which is the hydrogen and the red are mostly oxygen atoms. So you can see there are lots of different patterns of this uh, molecule. Um, this particular example is an example of glucose. So glucose, the molecular formula for glucose is C6H12. O6. The arrangement would be either this way or this way. Sometimes we see a pattern in which we can exactly look at the number of carbon and oxygen and hydrogen as to this orientation. And for simplicity, uh, a lot of times the, uh, the shape D is predicted for um, the glucose molecules. Uh, so these are the four different uh, models that can be used uh, to describe, for example, one molecule. Now, uh, the process of metabolism is a very uh, complicated process and we will get to it uh, later. What is the purpose of metabolism? Metabolism is, is pretty much defined as sum total of all chemical reactions. 
So it's the sum total of all the reactions that are used within the within the body to either break down larger molecules to smaller one or uh, smaller molecules can be used to build a larger complex molecule which can store that energy. So one set of reactions which are the building reactions are more like the anabolic reaction. You may have heard the term anab uh, anabolic steroids and that's just one term in which it means it's body building or it's building up. Um, catabolism on the other hand means uh, breaking down. Uh, all of these reactions uh, have something in common that they use energy. You cannot pretty much do anything or any kind of work without energy. So living things must sustain themselves and grow and maintain and they need a constant supply of this energy. Secondly, we find that all of these reactions are enzyme driven, which means that if I just leave a, a pound of glucose sitting on the counter, it's, not, it's just going to have a stored energy. It's not going to give any energy. Uh, but if I, uh, if I, let's say, I put it under a stove, you know, put it on the stove, I mean, uh, yes, it, it will start caramelizing energy is released. Now, we uh, humans will take food and our food is broken down into ultimately glucose. Um, we cannot afford to have our cells uh, at a higher temperature. It's going to pretty much break down some of these macromolecules. But in order for us to extract the energy from the glucose, we need um, enzymes that will help and to splitting that molecule and driving that energy to us. So here is um, here is some um, very simple terminology that you must know. It's really important to understand these. Uh, each of these larger macromolecules are derived from something um, simpler or the precursor molecule as we can say it. So let's say the precursor for carbohydrates would be simple sugars. The precursors for lipids would be fatty acids. Precursors for proteins are amino acids. And the precursors for nucleic acids are nucleotides. Uh, carbohydrates, I think most of you are familiar with to what those are. So products such as starch, wheat, rice, grains have a com uh, abundant carbohydrate in them. Lipids are molecules that are waxy or oily or uh, for example, um, butter or lard and margarine, or these are all lipids and even vegetable oils. Proteins are molecules that are present in, um, in, in many ways within the cells. And we will uh, look at the various ways uh, and the various roles of protein in, it, in its by itself in a different slide. Nucleic acids are those molecules that help code uh, the genetic code from one generation to the other. Now, since these are all the precursor molecules and for each of these molecules to find form these large macromolecules they need to be combined to form a larger complex so imagine if you had a um, um, hundred pieces of small little pieces of legos and you had to construct something a home or a, or a barn or something out of that set you have to connect each lego piece together the connection of each simpler uh, unit which is called as the monomer. Mono means one. A monomer can be combined and into forming a polymer which means many of these units. And it is done through uh, a reaction which is called as condensation. Condensation is a reaction in which you combine two monomers to form a polymer. So for example, let's look at the reaction in this picture A. You can see that both of these um, glucose molecules are showing uh, with the one of the uh, bonds hanging down, which is the OH. Now, if hydrogen from one and the OH from the other is released as a water molecule, then that leaves one oxygen in the center, which is now linking up the two units. So what has happened? Water has formed and in, in water forming has somehow covalently linked the two molecules together. So this is a reaction which is called as condensation and in this reaction one water molecule is released. On the other hand if we want if we have a complex that is a chain of molecules and we want to split it uh, you can pretty much uh, visualize that it's going to be the opposite which is if you add water to the molecule, it will help to hydro hydrolyze it, which means uh, splitting of the molecule 
and in splitting of the molecule one oxygen will grab the hydrogen to itself and form the OH and the other one is uh, is is using is taking the OH from the water so this way you have split um, a, a molecule that has two or more chains cooking is pretty much an example of hydrolysis because we're constantly breaking down uh, larger complex carbohydrate lipids or proteins into smaller units so now let's look at what are carbohydrates carbohydrates are uh, besides what you know about the food in which in which food they're present carbohydrates are of three different um, classes they are the first class which are called as the monosaccharides mono means one it's just based off one sugar oligosaccharides are usually disaccharides is an example of an oligosaccharide uh, oligo means a shorter chain so you can have a chain of perhaps two to three uh, monomers together and polysaccharide means that it's going to be complex carbohydrates there are hundreds and thousands of chains so keep in mind we have either one uh, two or many units together um, the, the function of carbohydrates within cells is that it's it gives instant energy it's the first source of energy that is required by cells of um, whether it's plants or animals um, it is also the stored form of energy um, excess uh, starch is actually excess sorry excess glucose is stored as starch in plants and the term we use in in animals is glycogen so we will never have starch in our bodies we will have probably glycogen depots and plants will always store starch uh, um, glucose as starch now here is an image of a starch you can see how many complex chains there are uh, sometimes the chains can be even linked so we're looking at chains that are even could be 400 to 600 units long um, an oligosaccharide uh, is for example table sugar in which you see two units together and it's one unit is a glucose one is a fructose unit combined to give you a disaccharide fructose and glucose are the two monosaccharides um, starch as I just uh, mentioned previously is a stored form of polysaccharides in plants um, glycogen is in animals and another kind of complex uh, carbohydrate that you're familiar with is cellulose cellulose is you always found in plants and it's usually the the carbohydrate that is not soluble in water um, abundant uh, ab abundant supply of starch and glycogen are always uh, stored in in the cells and uh, they can be uh, used during starvation or when the cell deprived of energy so that's about um, the, the the carbohydrates. Um, you can see in these images over here, uh, for example, uh, in this insect, um, the shell um, is going to have some complex carbohydrates in there, um, which is going to give you that uh, chitin, that uh, that texture that you're getting, which is called as chitin. All right, let's look at.